Hello, my budding mathematicians. I'm Ms. Hearn, and let's get started. We're going to look at analyzing some logic statements to determine the truth value, which just means determine if they're true or false. But before we do, these are the basic rules that we're going to be using. First of all, P or Q, and this symbol here, that means or. P or Q is only false if both parts are false. The P has to be false and the Q false. Otherwise, this is going to be a true statement. The next symbol here is AND. So that looks like an upside down V. P and Q is only true if both parts are true. The next symbol here, this is a negation. This is read not. Not P is the opposite truth value of P. So if P is true, not P is false and vice versa. And then the last symbol that we need to be familiar with in order to work through these problems is this arrow, which is called the conditional. But the way that we read this is if P, then Q. If P, then Q is only false when P is true and Q is false. So the first exercise that we're going to look at is negation of P or Q. And we are told that P, Q, and R are always true and S, T, and U are always false for all of these exercises that we're gonna do. So under those circumstances, if we're trying to figure out the truth value of negation of P or Q, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace each of these letters, which are called components, with their truth value, true or false. So we know P and Q are both true, so we're going to rewrite this statement as negation of a true or a false. Now there's a certain order of operations here. You have to do the negation before you do the or, because the negation is being applied just to the T, not to everything. So what is the negation of true? What is not true? Well, not true means false. So we have false or false. So the way that I got from this step to this step was to apply the rule negation of P is the opposite truth value of P. So negation of a true is a false. And now we're gonna do false or false. False or false. The rule for or is P or Q is only false if both are false. Well, they are both false. So that means that false or false is false. So that tells us that that statement has the truth value false. Let's look at another one. The next one, which is number seven in the class that I'm teaching right now, asks us to find the negation of P and S in parentheses or and parentheses Q and T. So the first step that we're going to do is to rewrite this where we've replaced each component statement, each letter, with its truth value. So I'm just gonna copy everything down but put what its truth value is. So P is true, we were told that at the beginning, and S is false, and then Q is true, and T is false. Then we're going to work inside any parentheses first. So notice that in both of these parentheses, we have an expression that's true and false. True and false. So we're going to work on that. Well, the rule for and is it's only true if both are true. That means that in every other situation, it's false. Well, we don't have both true here. So it's one of the other situations. So these are going to be false. Now copy down the rest of the symbols. We don't have the parentheses anymore because we've done what's inside of the parentheses. So we just have negation of false, then an or symbol, and then a false. Now we're going to have to apply which symbol next? The negation or the or? Well, the negation is only being applied to this 
false statement. So anytime you have the negation of an individual component, you have to do that before you do the adjacent operations. So the negation of false is the opposite of false, which is true. So that leaves us with true or false. Now we need to refer to the rule for or. Remember, an or is only false if both are false. So that means that this or statement is true. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.